thank you all for tuning in if you're watching online and thank you all for showing up my name is wade if you don't know my name and uh, welcome to wednesday night service at grace community church let me open this up in a, a word of prayer before we get started father i just thank you for another opportunity to get up here and uh, share your word and share what you've laid on my heart this week to share with everyone else Lord, I just pray that you'd open our hearts and minds to receive what it is that you have for us tonight. And Lord, I just pray for all the people that are, are suffering from sickness or, or whatever else they might be suffering from tonight. I pray that you'd comfort them, Lord, right where they're at. And Lord, I just pray that you would just place your Holy Spirit within me and, and speak through me, Lord. I pray that nothing I say will be my own opinion or my own ideas, but only what you give me. And uh, we just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. We had a pretty good one. Uh, Mom was, had planned on being uh, at the hospital with her sister while she had a, had a procedure done, but that didn't happen, so last minute we just went out and ate at Shoney's. So we, we had a pretty good... Thanksgiving. It was simple, but I kind of enjoyed that. wasn't hectic, wasn't wasn't stressful. We actually got to just sit down and enjoy a meal together without all the the stuff that comes along with preparing it. Uh, if you were here a couple of weeks ago, the message was on being under the authority of Christ and the benefits of being under authority. And how the only power that we have to change or the only power we have to live a godly life comes from being under the authority of Jesus. And it's his power that gives us through the Holy Spirit to be the man of God or the woman of God that he calls us to be. And we talked about how just looking godly or putting on our, our church mask on Sundays or posting pretty things on Facebook to make our lives look good that don't help us at all, you know, when real life happens, when our life is falling apart. You know, looking good don't really help you any. The only thing that really helps us through those hard times is truly being submitted to God's authority and totally surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and trusting Him to take care of us as a, you know, a good, good father, like we sing in that song. And trusting Him to provide for us. And trusting Him to protect us and comfort us when we need comforted. And to lead us when we don't know which way to go. And to guide us because He does that because we belong to Him. Because we are surrendered to Him. And, uh, you know, we read last week that once we've surrendered to Him, we've been adopted by Him as sons and daughters. And we trust Him to take care of us as long as we're obedient to Him like the children of God that we're supposed to be, like God's Word says we are if we're led by the, the Holy Spirit instead of our own desires. And uh, we read that in Romans 8, verses 14 through 16. Uh, if you don't remember those from last week, I'll go ahead and share those with you. In Romans 8, verses 14 through 16, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. And now we call him Abba, Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. You know, like Phil and Cindy were talking about a minute ago, it's not just going through the motions, it's actually belonging to a family, the family of God and being in fellowship with other believers and uh, other parts of the body, parts of the family. So when we come to God, we're not just going through motions. We're actually joining his family. Uh, what I want to talk about tonight, goes it goes right along with what Chris talked about Sunday. Sunday morning, you know, we have a lot of people that believe in God, and we come to church and we go through the motions, but... They're not surrendered to God. And I'm not just talking about Grace Community Church. I'm talking about the church worldwide. You know, I always tell you, I start praying. As soon as I get done tonight, I'll be praying about 
what God wants me to preach on next week. So uh, I started praying a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he led me to these verses in Luke. In Luke chapter 11, verses 38 through 44, It's talking about the Pharisees. It says his host, which was a Pharisee, is talking about Jesus, was amazed to see that he sat down to eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony required by Jewish custom. Then the Lord said to him, You Pharisees are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you're filthy. You're full of greed and wickedness. Fools, didn't God make the inside as well as the outside? So clean the inside by giving gifts to the poor, and you will be clean all over. What sorrow awaits you, Pharisees, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore justice and the love of God. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. What sorrow awaits you, Pharisees, for you love to sit in the seats of honor in the synagogues and receive respectful greetings as you walk in the marketplaces. Yes, what sorrow awaits you, for you are like hidden graves in a field. People walk over them without knowing the corruption that they are stepping on. You know, during that passage, Jesus is rebuking the Pharisees. You know, first they were looking down on Jesus because he didn't wash his hands before he sat down to eat. So he was, he was reminding them that God's more concerned with what's inside you than how you look on the outside. Like we just talked about a second ago, just looking godly doesn't, doesn't help you a bit. Uh, another place where he talked about that is in Matthew chapter 23, verses 27 through 28. He pretty much says the same thing. He says, what sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law? And you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you're like whitewashed tombs. You're beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. So I want, what I want to talk about this week is being buried with Christ. If you're taking notes at home or, or writing anything down here, the main scripture that we'll be focused on this week is going to be coming from Romans chapter 6. And there'll be other verses too, but the, the main scripture is in Romans 6, verses 3 through 6. Uh, I want to stop right here before we actually get into talking about that and reading that and uh, just pray about it. Father, I just thank, thank you for these verses. I thank you for putting them on my heart. And Lord, I just pray that you'd open our minds to see these verses in the way that you gave it to me a couple of weeks ago. I pray that you help us to see what you're saying to us through these verses. I think we've heard them so many times at baptisms and in other places, Lord, that uh, we lose the meaning of them. It just becomes something that we recite. And I just pray that you would just give us understanding, give us wisdom, Lord, and, and help us to understand your word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, like I said a while ago, a lot of people come to Jesus and they, they truly do believe and they lay things down at the altar and die to themselves. You know, when they bring those things to the altar, and they, they do mean it. They 100% mean it. But uh, I also believe that many people are doing the same thing that I did for years, you know, I would come to the altar and confess things to God in that moment. I would die to myself and I'd surrender to Jesus and mean it, but I never got buried. So uh, I want to read those verses in Romans 6, verses 3 through 6. It says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. 
knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. <clears throat> like I said, I would bring things to the altar, and uh, I would mean it. I would confess to God, and I would die to myself in that moment. Confess, God, I know this is wrong. This is what I've been doing. But I never got buried. I would die, but I never surrendered my heart. And I would get up and walk right back out the way that I came in. Nothing changed on the inside. And that's what I want to focus on tonight is have you been buried with Christ? I listened to a message a couple of weeks ago from uh, Preston Morris. And in that message, he said some things that really got my attention. He said that dead people get brought back to life all the time. And he, he said his sister is a doctor. She actually works in a hospital. And he said it's real common, you know, during heart attacks and, and surgeries for people to die. And uh, they revive them all the time. They give them CPR. They shock their hearts back to life. Or they, you know whatever they need to do at that moment, and they bring them back to life. But nothing's changed. You know, their their physical state is the same. They just died for a second, and they brought them back to life. They hadn't done the surgery yet. They hadn't done anything to change anything about their situation. They just died and were brought back to life. And uh, they just revived the old life that was there before. And like I just told you a minute ago, I did that countless times. I would confess and die to myself in that moment and truly mean it, but nothing changed. And as soon as the conviction wore off and my emotions calmed down, you know, that got me to the altar to start with. And then, you know, once my emotions calmed down and uh, the conviction went away because I had confessed those things to God, then the temptation would come again as soon as I got up and walk away. And since I didn't change anything on the inside, I didn't have the holy, the power of the Holy Spirit to help me. So I would do the only thing I knew how to do. You know, I would give in to my temptation and my desires, even hating myself while I was doing it, knowing what I was doing. I'd go right back to the same old stuff. I kept giving CPR to the old man instead of leaving him at the altar and letting him die. Kept reviving the old man inside of me. Uh, Preston said in that message that people are brought back from the dead all over the world all the time. But here's the part of it that got my attention and uh, led me to these verses. He said there's no doctor on earth that can go out to a graveyard and dig up a body and resurrect it once it has been buried. You know, they don't have the power to create new life. We can sustain the life that we have. We can revive the life that we have. But once that life is gone, they don't have the power to resurrect. Only Jesus has the power to resurrect. And uh, back to Romans 6 in verse 5 that we just read, it says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also or be also in the likeness of his resurrection. And uh, I think that's the problem. A lot of us are being revived. We're not being resurrected. We're reviving our old lives, you know, because we, we never got buried to start with. And when things get hard or the temptation comes back, <clears throat> we're not resurrected. We're just revived. And if we're buried with Christ, the old man is supposed to be dead. It says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 that God has quickened us who were dead in our trespasses and sins. So before we came to Christ, we were dead in, in our sin. And uh, that's not our life. That's what we call our lives until we come to Christ. We're only truly alive when we surrender our life to Jesus and God resurrects the spirit in us that we should have in us. When we let our old sinful nature die, God resurrects his Holy Spirit within us. 
and he rises us from the dead as a new man. That's what Jesus is talking about. Like when he was talking to Nicodemus, he's like, how can a man be born again? And uh, he told Nicodemus, you know, nobody can enter the kingdom of heaven unless he is born again from above and receives the Holy Spirit. So many of us die, but we never get buried. We get so close to the gravesite over and over again, just like I did, but we never go that last step and let the old man get buried. Uh, back to Romans 6 again in verse 7, it says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. That's why we have such a hard time. That's why I had such a hard time overcoming my sin. It was you know, I would die and then revive, die and then revive. I never stayed dead, so I wasn't free from my sin. The only way that we're freed from sin, it says there in verse 7, is when we're dead. Only when we're dead we're freed from sin. As long as we keep on clinging on to the life and giving ourselves CPR when we feel like we need to keep control, God can't resurrect us while we're still alive. He can only resurrect something that is truly dead. Just like, you know, when you get underwater and you can't breathe and you start freaking out, you know, I need to take a breath, and you start fighting for your life to take that breath, that's the same way we do with our old lives. That's the way, you know, I did with mine. When I would get so close to letting the old man die, you know, my soul would freak out and I would just frantically run back to my old ways and hold on tighter than ever before. You know, I would, I would get so close to freedom, and then the thoughts would start running through my mind about never being able to drink again, or never being able to do this again, or whatever. Then I would run back out and fall deeper into sin than I ever was before, trying to, trying to compensate for that. But I can, I can remember clearly the day I made the choice to truly die, to stay dead, and allow, allow myself to be buried and to totally trust Jesus with my life. I can remember the words I said. I said, Lord, I don't care if I die. I'm, I give my life to you, and I'm, I'm going to trust you with it. And, uh, you know, when I told him that, I meant it, because uh, at that point in my life, it was a real possibility that I could have just physically died by you know, just going cold turkey. But I meant it. I'm, I'm really giving you my life, even if it cost me my life. And that day, the old man did die, and he was buried. And that was the day that uh, God sent his Holy Spirit and resurrected the new man in me. And that was the, the best thing I ever did. It says in, back to Romans 6 again in verse 4, it says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also we should walk in the newness of life. Uh, Phil hit that on that a little bit when he was sitting here just a minute ago. If you're going through the motions and your life hasn't changed any, if there's nothing, no change in your life, then you're not walking in the newness of life. You're just going to church. Your life is still the same. You're still spending your whole week the way you've always spent it. And that, that's what I was doing. And uh, when you're walking in newness of life, it's exactly that. It's a different life than you when you were living before Jesus. There should be a lifestyle you had before you came to Jesus, and then there should be newness of life after Jesus, you know, evidence of a resurrected life. You know, I'm, we heard those verses over and over, you know, when you go to a baptism, you know, buried with Christ, raised to walk in the newness of life. You know, we heard it over and over at baptisms. I even heard it at my own baptism and twice. I've been baptized twice, but I had no idea what that meant. You know, I hadn't experienced that because I'd never let myself get buried. Uh, like I said a while ago, going through the motions, that 
that don't save you. That don't change you. You know, you don't receive the Holy Spirit just by going through the motions or, or repeating a prayer after somebody. You have to truly, in your heart, surrender your will to God's will. You have to truly give your heart to God and surrender your life unto death and let Him resurrect you. Then that's what saves you. It also says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, and the old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. So if we're in Christ, the old stuff is supposed to be passed away, and all things new. We're baptized we should be baptized in the Spirit before we ever get baptized in the water. You know, when we come to Christ and truly surrender to Him, we should be a different person from that moment on. You know, I've said the prayers, and I went through the motions over and over, and nothing was becoming new in my life. Even though I'd get convicted, like I talked about earlier, and regret the things that I did, and I would confess them, my heart didn't change. You know, in my mind and in my heart, I knew that I would do those things again. I never planned on not doing them. I always, you know, I, w I would do the same thing over and over. I'd come to the altar, confess my sins, and then I'd sit there and I'd wait on something magical to happen. I'd wait on things to change. You know, I was waiting on God to do all this work, and I didn't have to do anything. So even my mindset going up there was, you know, I still had plans to go right back and do the same thing again. I never went up there with the mindset of, I'm truly giving this to you. I'm not going to do this anymore. Always in the back of my mind, I still knew that I was going to do those things again. Uh, confession without repentance, which is what I was doing, that's only an apology to God. You know, I knew what I was doing was wrong. And I would tell God how sorry I was, and I'd ask him to forgive me. But deep down, like I said, when the conviction wore off and uh, my emotions calmed down, the desire was still there. The old man was still alive, and nothing had changed. And if, if that's where you are today and it feels like your life is on a repeat cycle, You've got to get serious with God, and you've got to make that decision in your heart to quit dying over and over and make that decision to be buried with Christ and let God resurrect you. And he will give you new desires if you let the old ones die. He can't resurrect something that's still alive, like I said a while ago. Uh, since I have surrendered to Christ and he has gave me his Holy Spirit, and resurrected me. Uh, like I just said, he changes your desires. He's put me in situations since I've surrendered to him, you know, where I'm trying to help somebody else find freedom from, you know, the bondage of alcohol that had me down for so long that God delivered me from. He's put me in situations where I've had to, you know, take bottles of liquor from them, have it in my hand, and I'll go outside and pour it out. But by the Holy Spirit, the thought of taking a drink never entered my mind at all. It never tempted me, never. There was no temptation. It never even entered my mind to take a drink because my desires have changed. He gave me new desires. He took those old ones away from me. You know, I tell you all the time that everything we need to live a godly life comes through the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. Uh, that list, you know, we visit it all the time in Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. It says the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Uh, but without the fruit of the Spirit, you know, I was powerless against all the things I had in my life. But when we're buried with Christ, we get all those things. We have the self-control. We have the peace and the, 
the things that we need so we don't have to give in to that temptation anymore. <coughs> when we're buried with Christ, we don't just come back to life. We die, and those the old man dies too, and the new man is resurrected to new life through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, we always stop right there at verses 22 and 23, but if you go on to the next two verses, in Galatians 5, verses 24 and 25, it tells us that those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and the desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So God empowers us. He gives us new desires and he leads us in a new direction that we wouldn't go before because we're guided by the Holy Spirit. And we're not guided by our old nature. It's nailed to the cross like we read in verse 24 there. You know, if I was still being led by my old nature, I would have never been able to pour out a bottle of liquor before I surrendered to Christ. I probably, I know what I would have done. I would have condemned that person for what they were doing. I would have told them how wrong it was. And then I probably would have, took it right in the next room and drunk it myself. You know, how many of us do that? You know, we condemn other people for things that we're doing ourselves because we know it's wrong, but we don't want to admit that we're doing it. So we'll, we'll find somebody else that's doing it and we'll condemn them, tell them how wrong it is all the while we're doing it ourselves. You know, I did that for a long time. But now I, I don't do that anymore. God gave me the power to actually help somebody get sober because he helped me do it. God changes your desires and he gives you a new heart. Uh, King David, after he did all the things that he did, in Psalm 51 and verse 10, he's asking God, he's burying himself here. He's saying, create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. And that's what we have to do. We have to allow our, ourselves to be buried with Christ and ask God to create in us a clean heart and renew our spirits. He don't just dust off your old heart. You know, he creates a new one. And that's what I tried to do for so long was try to clean up my old heart and uh, try to mix the old one and the new one. And you can't do that. God removes your old heart, and he gives you a new heart, and you truly are a new creation in Christ. <clears throat> and when you do that, the world don't change, and the people around you don't change. All those things still stay the same, but God will change you, and you can change the people around you through Christ in you, through the Holy Spirit in you. He gives you the ability to be able to help others get to the place where they need to be, where God can help them too. You know, the world is always going to be full of temptation and trouble, but once you've been buried and resurrected with Christ, those temptations that used to rule over you, just like they used to rule over me. You know, I, I couldn't see, I couldn't foresee one entire day without doing the things I used to do, much less a, a lifetime of doing it. It had that much rule in my life. You know, I was powerless against it, and I, I fought it for so long. But once you surrender to Christ and truly die and let him resurrect you and get his Holy Spirit within you, he does give you the power to do the things you need to do. Back to Romans 6 again in the, Verse 14, it says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. So once we surrender to Christ, the sin don't have power over you anymore. And like I said a minute ago, the world hasn't changed, the people around you haven't changed, and the sin hasn't changed. The temptation hasn't changed. It just don't have dominion over you anymore. It don't have the power over you anymore that it had before. All you know 
for me that alcohol was my biggest stronghold, but I had I had many others. That alcohol was probably just you know the most evident one. But since I've surrendered to Christ, you know, alcohol hasn't changed. It's still available everywhere. They didn't close all the all the liquor stores when I came to Christ. They didn't stop selling beer and stuff and all the, the gas stations. All that stuff is still available, and it's socially acceptable. It's even legal, but that don't mean it's, it's good for me. I know it's wrong for me. So all that stuff is still there. But the only difference is, like it says there in verse 14, it don't have dominion over me anymore because I'm under the authority of Christ now. Christ has dominion over me instead of my sin. You know, I chose to be buried with Christ and let the old man die and let God resurrect the new man with new desires. Uh, that's what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 16, or I think it's Luke chapter, I mean, John 16, 33. I've got my books mixed up. Jesus said, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Like I said, the world don't change when we come to Christ. We're still going to have trouble. We're still going to have trials. We're still going to have those temptations. All that sin is still out there. None of that has went away. But the difference is being surrendered to him and being under his authority and receiving his Holy Spirit, we won't be overcome by those things anymore. Like we just read, we won't be, they won't have dominion over us anymore. And we can overcome the world and its temptations through the Holy Spirit. Uh, like I said, alcohol was one of my biggest strongholds, but there was, there was many other ones. And I believe, you know, I believe many of you deal with those same ones that I have. The Bible says that those things are common to man. They're not just, you may think you're the only one dealing with certain things, but the Bible says that they're all common to man, things like anger and lust and pride and bitterness and resentment and envy. You know, that list just goes on and on and on. And any of those things, we can't get over any of those things on our own. And we can't just die to them because like we just talked about earlier, if all we do is die to them, all we have to do is, is revive them. We have to bring them to Jesus and confess them to him we do have to do that, but then we have to repent. That's where I would miss it every time. I would come and confess it and feel bad about it, but I didn't repent. I didn't turn from it. I didn't go a different direction. All I was doing was confessing. So we have to repent and allow the old man to turn from them and die, and not just die in that moment, but totally surrender our will to his. Just like Jesus surrendered his will to the Father's will. Uh, a good example of that, he says it all through the Scripture, you know, I'm here to do the will of my Father. But I think the greatest example was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, in Luke chapter 22, verses 42 through 44, this is Jesus saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. You know, giving, giving up our will to God's will is not easy. I mean, it, it was very painful for me. And, uh, you know, depending on how long you've been in the, the lifestyle that you live now, or the things that you're facing now, it's not easy to just give up your lifestyle, give up your will and surrender to God's. That's painful. It was painful for Jesus. You know, it says that it was so painful for him that his sweat became blood. I looked up that there's a physical term for that. It's called hematohydrosis. You know, that's an, an actual... Uh, 
physical thing that happens called hematohydrosis when it, he was in such agony that his sweat became blood. So it's not easy, and I'm not going to tell you it's easy. But that's what we have to do. It can be painful. But when we surrender our will and we allow ourselves to be crucified and buried with Christ, God will also resurrect us in Christ, like we just read a while ago in, in Romans 6 and verse 5. And when we do that, we don't have to fight the sin anymore because it don't have dominion over us. The only way we're fighting it before is because it still has dominion over us. And we're trying real hard to do good, but we can't because we don't have the power of God in our lives. Once we have surrendered to Christ and sin don't have dominion over us anymore, we, like I just said, we don't have to fight the sin anymore. The only thing we have to focus on is staying surrendered to Jesus, staying under his authority. And that is a daily thing. You know, every day we have to get up and recognize that I need to be under Jesus' authority. Like we talked about the last time we met. And it's him, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that fights sin for us. We started out, uh, started this message talking about the Pharisees and how they just looked godly on the inside. And the Bible says that they were corrupt and full of dead men's bones. And, uh, you know, I'm, I firmly believe that's the way a lot of the worldwide church is as a whole today. You know, we look good. We we go through the motions, you know. Just to look at us from the outside, we're good church-going people. But we're not changing anything. You know, we argue on the way to church in the car. Then we get out of the car smiling. We go into church. We have church. And then we get back in the car and argue all the way home in the car. Nothing changes on the inside. You know, we like we try to look good and, and godly at church or in the community, but behind closed doors at home, we're still doing the same things that we always did, things that we say we condemn. Uh, like I talked about a while ago, we'll condemn things when we're talking with our church crowd, but then when we're not in church. We're actually doing those things ourselves. And uh, I lived like that for years. That's a miserable way to live. And uh, there is a way out of that. We have to surrender our life to Christ, to allow ourselves to die and let God resurrect us and put a new heart in us. You know, we say we love one another. And in our hearts, we still have that same unforgiveness and bitterness and resentments that we've always had. And just like Jesus told those Pharisees that he could see through them and see what was inside of them, he can see what's in our hearts too. He knows what's in our hearts and he knows what goes on in our homes. You know, we, we can't fool God. We might be fooling some people, but we never fool God. So if you are struggling inside yourself with those things and nothing is changing, you know, if you're not, walking in the newness of life, like that verse said, then uh, chances are you haven't been buried. So that's our, you know, every week we seem like we wind up with a question for the week. So the, the question this week is, is, you know, have you really been buried with Christ or do you keep dying to yourself over and over and being revived? <clears throat> like I used to do. We've got to quit giving that old man CPR and trust God fully to let him have your heart and surrender your will to him, just like Jesus did in Gethsemane. Like I said, that, that's scary and it's painful, but uh, that's necessary to, to turn your will over to God's will. We have to allow the old man to be buried. And God is faithful. He won't leave you hanging. He will send his Holy Spirit and resurrect you to new life, but he, like I said a while ago, he can't resurrect something that isn't dead. We have to be willing to let those things die. You know, for me, the the biggest part was that one thing I just couldn't let go of. So what's that? 
what does that one thing look like for you that you can't let go of? You know, it's something different for everybody. We're, we're not cookie-cutter people. You know, for you it may be anger or unforgiveness or there's something that you just can't give up control of or you can't surrender control of to God. So once you figure out what that is, you know, take it to God and talk to Him about it. Be honest with Him about how hard that is. And uh, He'll give you the strength to lay it down, but you just have to trust Him and let the old man die and, and quit hanging on to it. And give up that old life and he'll he will give you a new one. Uh, I'd like to share this verse right here with you in closing in Matthew chapter sixteen in verse twenty five. Uh, it took me a long time to realize this, and it, it's really true. He says, Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. You know, as long as I was hanging on to my old life. I was killing myself, and I was I was killing every every relationship in my life. I was killing everything good in my life. I was killing it because I was trying to hang on to my old life. So he says, "Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it." And uh, that is so true. When I actually allowed the old man to die and allowed him to resurrect me, and now I actually have a life. You know, before my life, all it did was revolve around my sin, trying to hide it, trying to provide for it, trying to all the different things. You know, none, none of my relationships mattered the only thing that mattered to me was the thing that was at the center of my life, and that was that was my sin. But when I allowed that life to die and be buried, then uh, like he says there, when I let that one die, for his sake, I found my life, the life that God had for me. And I wish I would have done it a whole lot sooner, but God knows what he's doing in this time. And one of the things I'm the most thankful for is his long suffering. He don't give up on us. God is always there, but we're not guaranteed tomorrow. That's why the Bible says today is the day of salvation. I thank God all the time that he allowed me to live as long as I did until I did surrender to him. You know, I, I saw a, a a thing on the news last week about one of the sororities in a college, how some, I think he was 19 years old, they were hazing the boy and uh, making him drink just crazy amounts of alcohol in just a few minutes, and that boy died of alcohol poisoning. And that got me thinking about how gracious God was to me. And, you know, how many times I should have died from alcohol poisoning. But God had mercy on me. And uh, I didn't die. So I, that takes on a, <clears throat> a really special meaning to me that... God spared my life a bunch of times that I could have, I would have been taking my own life. But God spared me, and uh, he had mercy on me, and he got me through that, and he forgave it to me. And when I did surrender to him, he gave me a new life. So if your life does feel like you just keep going in a cycle and you keep hanging on to it, eventually you will lose your life to it. That's what that verse says. If you save your life, if you hang on to your life, and you won't surrender it to God, eventually you will lose your life. Because none of us live forever here on this earth. God says, you know, it's appointed to us once to die, and then the judgment. So I urge you, if you haven't fully surrendered to God and, 
and let yourself be buried with Christ and allow him to resurrect you, I pray that you will take it seriously and do it. Because, like I said, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. And if you haven't fully surrendered to him and you die like that, then <clears throat> when we're born, we're all born in condemnation. We're born with a sin nature. And the word condemnation pretty much just means a death sentence. We are condemned. We are born condemned. So we're born with a death sentence. And, uh, you know, Romans 8 and verse 1 says, for those that are in Christ, there is no condemnation. So when we surrender our life to Christ, he removes the death sentence from us, and he gives us a life sentence, eternal life sentence. We go from a death sentence to a life sentence. We go from being condemned to hell to getting an eternal life sentence with God in heaven. So if you haven't surrendered your life to Christ, I would urge you to do that today. But uh, that's all I've got for tonight. So our question this week, are you, are you buried with Christ or are you just Continue to die over and over and keep reviving the old man. But uh, God really spoke loud to me on that a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I can remember the exact point in my life that I did that. And if you haven't done that, I urge you to do that. But thank you all for letting me share. Uh, and thank you for listening to me. And I hope that helps somebody. But let me... Pray for us, and we will be dismissed. Father, thank you for giving me that message, and I praise you for just giving me the strength and the boldness to get up here and preach it, Lord. And Father, I pray that that helps somebody. I pray that it gives somebody courage to be honest enough with themselves and with you, Lord, to, to realize that they've just been going through motions and that they just keep dying and reviving. And I pray that this will lead them, Lord, to, to come to you and actually be buried so they can be resurrected. Father, we love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.